Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this virtual Spokane T24 virtual college fair. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And this is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions all week. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at that same website where you registered. I'd now like to turn it over to our presenters, starting with UW Seattle. Great, thanks so much and thanks for being here everyone. I'll go ahead and share my screen here. Um, I'm, my, my name is Ben Siegel. I'm one of our admissions counselors here at the University of Washington. Uh, today I'm also joined by my colleague Alicia Ruff who's here to help answer some questions in the chat. Um, so we're excited you all are here today with us. Um, as I said, I'm one of our admissions counselors here at the University of Washington. I graduated from UW a few years back. So I'm gonna first just share a little bit of information about UW itself um, before digging into our admissions process. So the UW Seattle campus, one of the three UW campuses along with Bothell and UW Tacoma. Um, students earn a UW degree at all three of those campuses and you'll hear, hear about, more about UW Bothell in a second. The UW Seattle campus is located in Seattle, Washington, just a few minutes north, um, a few miles north of downtown, maybe about, about 10 minutes north. Um, of downtown Seattle, right on the shores of Lake Washington. Um, from this image here, um, taken from the middle of campus, you can see right on the shores of Lake Washington. Um, so if you want to enjoy the outdoors while being at the UW Seattle campus, you can go rent a canoe, head out on Lake Washington, we're right on the Burt Hillman Trail. So go for a bike ride, go for a run on there. Um, lots of ways to engage with that nature in the city, as well as just about an hour out to the Cascades there. So. Lots of ways to engage with nature while in Seattle, um, as well as engage with aspects of city life. So if you want to go to a pro sports game, you want to go to a concert, um, you know, you want to check out some of our farmers markets in Seattle. Those are all things that students can engage with and enjoy as part of their time at UW. Um, we have about 180 different majors at UW, um, anything ranging from environmental science to geography to computer science um, to English to different languages. So there is a little bit of everything at UW. Um, a lot of students all have a major and a minor. Students could pursue a double major, for example, um, but lots of different pathways students can take in terms of their academics. Um, your experience at UW is going to extend well beyond just the classroom. So in a given year, about 9,000 students, undergraduate students, will participate in research um, we receive more federal funding for research than any other public institution in the U.S. So that could be in a lab in our health sciences building um, down by the UW hospital. That could be at our Friday Harbor Labs out in the San Juan Islands doing like marine biology or oceanography research. So lots of different ways to get that hands-on learning experience, um, you know, be it the research as well as internships, which I'll touch on a little bit too. Just like UW and at a glance there, as it relates to student life on campus, UW has nearly a thousand different student clubs. Um, so students can participate in a wide variety of activities to engage with other students, pursue those things you're interested in. Um, those could be more professional related clubs, such as undergraduate women in business or like robotics club, for example, um, ranging to say like a bagel club or Beyonce appreciation club. So a little bit of everything as it relates to clubs. When I was a UW student, I participated in a few clubs, including the Husky Running Club. So fun way to stay involved and meet other students who have similar interests to yourself. Um, about 70% of our freshmen will live on campus at UW. Students are never required to live on campus. Um, as a side note, we also have a Greek system at UW, so if you're interested in Greek life, welcome to check that out as well. Um, last two stats down here regarding our retention rate and time to graduation. Um, students are busy with a lot going on during their four years at UW, as you can tell from the last few minutes of me talking here. Um, but our students have a lot of support in their education, you know, be that our um, you know, tutoring services, going to professor office hours, meeting with advisors to determine major pathways and what's needed for graduation. So lots of support here at UW as you're pursuing your education, as well as opportunities to um, kind of supplement your in-classroom experience with some of those out of the classroom experiences um, as students engage and enjoy their education here. Here's just a few employers that call the Seattle area home or the greater Seattle area. Um, obviously lots of big Fortune 500 companies that you've heard of, um, but a lot of our students will have internships before they graduate, about 58% or so. Um, so that's a big part of the student experience. We wanna make sure that 
Um, our undergraduates are able to make connections off campus as well, explore the different fields that they're interested in um, so that when they're pursuing, say, a job after graduation, they have those connections, they have those hands-on learning experiences. So just for example, when I was a senior at UW, um, I had a, a kind of part-time job with Seattle Public Schools. Um, so a great way to obviously make a little bit of money while you're pursuing your education, but more importantly, kind of uh, make those connections and pursue what you're interested. Um, but yeah, just a little bit of information as it relates to some of those top employees of our UW graduates. I want to get into our application process really briefly here. Um, UW, we are on the coalition application, which is made up of about 150 different colleges and universities across the country. The coalition application is kind of split into two different portions when you're applying to UW. Um, you have the profile section, which is about 80% of your application. And then you have the UW question section, which is about 20% of your application. That profile section is open to students at any time throughout high school. So say if you're like a junior, sophomore, freshman, want to get a head start, you're welcome to do so. Those UW questions open up September 1st, your senior year. So if you're a senior, you can get going on that application and can submit at any time here. Um, we have an application fee of $80, but if you qualify for a fee waiver, that fee will be waived. Um, in the coalition application, there's a section that just says fee waiver. You can check yes to one of those boxes that say you qualify for free or reduced lunch or an ACT fee waiver. You will have that application fee waived. Um, so that's just like a little bare bones here. Um, we do not ask for transcripts. You're going to be self-reporting all of your coursework and grades on the coalition application. Um, additionally, we do not ask for letters of recommendation. And last this year, we do not require SAT or ACT score. So you're welcome to send them, um, but just know that low scores or no scores are not going to disadvantage you in any way as part of our application review process. So just a quick little overview of our application. We do a holistic review process at the UW, which means we look at more than just, um, you know, say your cumulative GPA, we're really gonna unpack that a little bit. So um, lots more information I'm happy to touch on in my individual session there, but um, ultimately we're looking well beyond just those grades and test scores. Um, I'll toss my contact information up here really quick, but again, we have those individual breakout sessions. We're happy to connect with you after this as well. Great, thank you so much. So next up, we'll hear from UW Bothell. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you all so much. Let me just grab my screen share real quickly and make sure I'm good to go from beginning. Okay, great. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Garrick Sherburn. I am from the University of Washington Bothell, but before I arrived at Bothell, I'm actually from Spokane, Washington. I went to high school at North Central and I'm super proud to be a graduate there. So I feel like I've come full circle with you all. So yay. Um, so University of Washington Bothell, um, as Ben had mentioned, there are actually three campuses of, oh, oh, snap. Sometimes I jump because my computer doesn't update right away. Sorry about that. Um, so as Ben had mentioned, there are three campuses of University of Washington. There's UW Bothell, UW Seattle, and UW Tacoma. And so what that means is as a prospective UW student, you can evaluate what you want to study and how you want to study it. And that can really influence which campus is the right fit for you. Um, so regardless of which campus you go to, your diploma says University of Washington. It's not going to say UW Seattle, UW Bothell, UW Tacoma. It's all the same university. So it's a really unique opportunity to really explore a lot of different options for how you want to be a UW student. Um, a great thing about UW Bothell is that we have excellent faculty in the sense that they're just that, they're faculty. We don't have any graduate assistants or any teaching assistants teaching any of our classes, which means you're getting hands-on work with the professionals in our field. It's a really awesome opportunity. Um, and then we are a very student-focused campus. We're a smaller campus. We only have about 6,000 students, which means kind of smaller class sizes. This next slide here will show you the numbers a little bit more. Um, so as I mentioned, about 6,000 students, that's gonna be on the smaller side of things. Um, our average class size is about 30, like a high school class now, or maybe a running start class potentially. Um, and we also have about half our students that are representing first generation status or first in their family to get a college degree. So that's really exciting um, to have those students represented on our campus. Um, so next I want to talk about a little bit about the timeline. So um, this is kind of what's happening for our seniors right now, but if you are not a senior quite yet, this is what will be happening during your senior year, so take notes here. Um, so as Ben mentioned, the coalition application, us and UW Seattle are both on the coalition application. So ideally you could fill out the profile at once and apply to both campuses with the same exact 
almost information. Um, our applications are separate, so we'll never know if you applied to Seattle, they'll never know if you applied to us, and our decisions will be separate as well. So you definitely need to check box UW Seattle and UW Bothell if you intend to apply to both or check the campus you're specifically interested in applying for. Um, we're going to skip November 15th for just a second. Um, so on January 15th is our application deadline as well as our financial aid deadline, the FAFSA or WASFA. So you'll fill those out. Um, and then about mid-March, you'll receive your admissions decision um, as well as your financial aid award letter. And then in May 1st is National Confirmation Day for all colleges in the U.S. Um, Bothell does have this thing here called the early action deadline. So if you are going to complete your application by November 15th, will give you an admissions decision by the new years. It's non-binding, so you can still apply other places, go other places. It just gets your early information if you've been admitted or not. Um, so if you're really excited about UW Bothell, I think early action is a fantastic opportunity. Um, if you want to wait for a second and focus on some other applications and wait till regular decision January 15th, absolutely no problem. Um, but this just kind of gives you a looking like what uh, it's looking like for you. Um, I will mention there's a lot of different deadlines for a lot of different colleges. As Ben had mentioned, UW Seattle's deadline is November 15th. And then as you hear from presenters after me, they'll have January 1st, uh, December 31st. So definitely keep track of your deadlines. It's going to be so important. I can't recommend it enough. Um, but for UW Bothell, January 15th is the application deadline and the financial aid deadline. And November 15th is our early action. So keep those in mind. Um, so Ben had also mentioned holistic review. That is exactly the name of the game here at UW Bothell as well. And I'm sure a lot of colleges behind me will say the same thing. Um, so there are a lot of different factors when we make admissions decisions. There's not an automatic admit or automatic deny based on GPA alone. So you really want to focus on all parts of your application. And the reason holistic review exists is that we're looking for reasons to admit people. We're never looking for reasons to deny people. So if you can provide us evidence to support your admission, we're going to take it and utilize it. Um, so with all these factors, um, we're looking at you academically as well as you personally. So your personal statement is kind of half your application, the activities log. The other half is kind of that grade trend, rigor curriculum. So all those pieces make up your whole application. And then um, we are also test optional this year. Yay! The SAT and ACT has had um, some discussion of potential uh, bias um, and classism that's existed in the test. So UW Bothell has moved to going test optional, which means we do not require the test scores. Um, so even if you submit test scores or you choose not to submit test scores, they will not hurt your application in any way, shape, or form. So don't worry too much about that. Um, just work on the rest of your application, and we hope to chat with you more about that later. Um, so as I mentioned, or Ben had mentioned also, we also have a breakout room. Um, so I would love for you to join my live Q&A chat so we can talk some more specifics. Um, my Zoom meeting ID for my private room is going to be down at the bottom there at 777-670-0514. And if for some reason you can't make the live Q&A session, don't worry, my email address is right there also. So feel free to type it in there. Um, it's just my last name, S-H-E-R-B-U-R-N at uw.edu. It's also in the contact corner here of my screen. Um, I do have a phone number, but like I don't answer it too often. So email is the best way to get a hold of me if that works for you. So thank you all so much. I'm going to pass it off to our next presenter here. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. And yep, so up next we have Western Washington University. I was just really ready to start presenting. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Julia Ide. I'm an admissions counselor at Western Washington University. Really excited to be here with you. I, of course, I'd rather be seeing your faces in person, but I'm glad we still have this. So I wanna give you a quick overview of Western Washington University. Bellingham, if you're not too familiar with us, that's okay. I didn't hear about Western until my junior year of high school, so just happy we can be here. We're um, in Bellingham, so that's a town of about 83,000 people. And as you can see from that picture at the top, we are right on the water, that's Bellingham Bay. We're also about 60 minutes from the Mount Baker ski area, so we're really lucky to be in such a great place for outdoor um, activities, if you like getting outside at all. And down Peptown, Bellingham's just a short walk away from campus, and that's where you'll have your coffee shops for studying, great places to eat, bookstores, that'll all be very close by. Western is a mid-sized university. We have about 16,000 students and 95% of those students are undergraduate students. So that's students that are earning their bachelor's degree. That is um, something I'll tell you a bit more about on the next slide because it does offer some unique opportunities to you. 
Our average class size is 27 and we have an 18 to 1 student to faculty ratio. We want to make sure that you have access to your professors and that you're able to really work with them and learn from them. All right, so academics. We have more than 175 majors at Western spread across our seven colleges you can see there. Uh, I want to shout out a few of those. Uh, first of all, the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. That's where you'll find your history, uh, political science, English, uh, anthropology, which I'm a graduate of Western's anthropology program, so I always want to shout that department out. There's also Woodring College of Education. Woodring is um, we started back in 1893 as a teacher's college, so we're really proud of that solid foundation we've maintained in education and training teachers to this present day. And actually a fun fact, in Washington State, more teachers come from the Woodring College of Education at Western Washington University than from any other school. So we're really proud of the impact we can have both on Washington State education as well as education throughout the rest of the country. Huxley College of the Environment is another one I want to tell you a bit more about. Huxley College was one of the first environmental science colleges to be established in the United States, so this is something that we really prioritized for some time. The study of the environment, sustainability, and how we can make our campus and our programs more sustainable. Last on that list, but definitely not least, is Fairhaven College of Interdisciplinary Studies. Fairhaven is our smallest college at Western, and in Fairhaven you have the opportunity to work with faculty to create your own course of study. You can see some of our popular majors on that list on the second half of this page. I do want to emphasize though that popular does not mean better. These are just some of our larger programs. Going back to how I said we are an undergraduate focused uni uh, university and how that applies to you. That means that you're not having to fight with graduate students for research positions with your faculty internships. Uh, your classes are taught by professors, not graduate students. So that means that you can really uh, dive in and dig into whatever it is you're studying outside of the classroom so that whatever is next for you after Western, whether you're going to medical school, graduate programs, working, that you're really prepared to do that. Of course, another huge factor of your college experience is student life and getting involved in the campus community. And we wanna make sure that that's easy for you to do so that you can build your support system here at Western and find your community. We have more than 250 different clubs on campus ranging from academic based clubs like chemistry club and psychology club, the professional women's association. We have the skiing and snowboarding club, Harry Potter club. We have the Bigfoot club. So there's clubs for all kinds of interest. Uh, I want to tell you a bit about the support resources we have as well to make sure that you're successful here at Western. And I really want to emphasize that there's no one formula to a successful college experience and what you need to be successful might not be the same as what another student needs and that's okay. We have our counseling center, career services center, tutoring center. Um, so make sure that you're utilizing those resources, whatever school you end up at. All right, so the application you can find on our admissions website. We do ask uh, that you send us transcripts, senior year schedule. We have decided to be test optional for students applying in 2021. So if you have scores, feel free to send those in, but no need to worry about it. You will still receive the same consideration for scholarships and admission as any other student who, whether or not you submit those test scores. This decision is only for 2021. So if you are going to be applying in a later year, just keep an eye for any updates on whether we stay test optional or go back to requiring one of those exams. We do have a $60 application fee as well, but we have need-based fee waivers that you can request when you go to submit your application. Please feel free to request one of those. We don't want this to be a burden on you or your family, and we don't want this to be uh, a factor that prevents you from applying. And also apply early. Our deadline for admission is um, early action November 1st. You'll hear a response by December 31st, but our regular decision deadline is January 31st, so you'll have plenty of time. This is a quick summary of the cost of attendance for both Washington residents and out-of-state students. I wanna go over our scholarships that we offer as well. Your application to Western doubles as your application for all of our scholarships, so there's nothing extra that you need to do. You will automatically be considered for these merit-based awards. There's also departmental scholarships that might be available to you down the road, and we have a scholarship center on campus that you can browse their list of scholarships for Western students or get some assist assistance applying. And finally, contact us. We're here to be a resource to you in the Office of Admissions. Again, my name is Julia. I uh, work with all the students from Spokane. I'm based here in Spokane, so feel free to reach out to me, whether that's answering questions about your academic program you're interested in or reading your essay before you submit your application. Happy to do that for you. And I hope I'll see you later in the Zoom uh, meeting after this session. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here today, and I hope I will get to connect with you later.
And thank you. And up next, we will hear from Central Washington University. All right. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Faith, and I'm a CWU admissions counselor. You'll see my contact information on this slide here, and I'll have it for you at the end as well. So Central Washington University is located in Ellensburg, Washington, which is right in the heart of Washington State. As you'll see on this slide here, we're about an hour and a half from Seattle and roughly three hours from Spokane. We are located along the I-90 corridor, so quick travel access to anywhere you're wanting to go throughout the state. We are also in the Cascade Mountains, foothills of the Cascade Mountains along the Yakima River, so all sorts of outdoor recreation opportunities. Our location is one of the main reasons that students will choose to come to Central. Ellensburg is a great place to live. Population is roughly 22,000 with roughly 12,000 students enrolled at Central. So it is a true medium sized college town. Um, Moving on. Another reason that students will choose to come to Central is because of our size. So we are a medium sized university. As I mentioned, we have about 12,000 students enrolled. Our average class size is going to be about 25 students getting even smaller as you get into your major. Um, I graduated from CWU with my degree in public relations and my major classes were typically about 15 students. So that was super important to me. It meant I had more one-on-one -on -one time with my professors. I really got to know them. They got to know me, which was important because it meant that they could write me strong letters of recommendation, help me find internships and careers after I graduated. Our, our student to faculty ratio is 18 to 1. We have great academics at CWU. We really pride ourselves on having robust academic programs that focus on hands on learning and um, experience that you can put into work when you're in your career field. So over 135 different majors at Central plus additional minors and specializations. No matter what you're interested in, you're guaranteed to find something for you here at CWU. Some of our top majors include business, education, music, and the sciences. Our um, business program is ranked in the top 5% in the country. Our education program graduates one in four Washington State educators each year. So um, very, very popular education program. We are also well known for our music program, which is the largest in the Pacific Northwest. Students can receive a degree in music composition, music performance, musical theater, and music education. Our science programs constantly growing. We have beautiful science facilities. Again, lots of opportunity for hands-on learning, and our undergraduate students also have the opportunity to conduct and publish research while they're at CWU. We have an array of unique majors that you won't find at other universities in the Pacific Northwest, including our paramedicine program, construction management, which has 100% job placement rate, and our apparel, textiles, and merchandising program as well. So applying to CWU, our application is online on the CWU website. We have a $60 application fee. However, we also accept fee waivers, when you apply, we would like you to submit your official high school transcripts and new this year, we are also test optional. So um, you're welcome to submit your SAT or ACT test scores. However, they are not required. We also ask for a personal statement for anyone who has a 3.0 or, or below. Um, we do a holistic review here at CWU. We have guaranteed admissions for students who have a 3.0 or above. So if you have a 3.0 or higher and you are a or complete, um, we will not need that personal statement. The priority date for our application is March 1st and our application is open now. Paying for college, we are a very affordable option in Washington State. You'll receive great value here at CWU. We also encourage our students to apply for FAFSA and WASFA as well as the Scholarship Central application. CWU awards over $109 million in financial assistance each year. So we have lots of ways to help you pay for college. Um, our 
our scholarship application opens November 1st and it closes March 1st. So some important dates to keep in mind, November 1st and March 1st for our scholarship application. One application puts you in the running for over 300 different scholarships that we offer here at CWU. We also offer automatic merit awards for students with high GPAs. We do have a live-in requirement for our first year students. So our first year students will get to live on campus in our beautiful residence halls. We have over 20 different residence halls to choose from. Room styles range from um, singles, doubles, triples, and suite style rooms. There's all sorts of ways to get involved on campus. We want to make sure that you're building memories outside of the classroom. So we host on-campus events, lots of student jobs available as well. Support services to make sure that you are successful during your time at CWU. Can you all see my screen? Um, All right, and so to close off here, here's my contact information for you. Again, my name is Faith George, and please feel free to reach out anytime. Thank you. And up next is Washington State University. Okay. Okay, hey, good morning. Hopefully everybody can see my screen. I'm gonna switch over to this one actually. Perfect. So I'm Randy with Washington State University. We'll be talking about Pullman today, but it is important to note that we do actually have campuses throughout the state, including Vancouver, Tri-Cities, Spokane, Everett and online, um, but again, we'll be focusing on Pullman, which is going to be our residential campus. It is gonna be where majority of our students are located down in Pullman, Washington. We're about an hour and a half or so from Spokane. Definitely a unique place to go to school and that we are in a very rural area, especially compared to other universities of our size. Our student body actually makes up over two thirds of the population of Pullman. Um, so kind of, Interesting fact, if you are there during the school year, we have about 34,000 people in the city of Pullman. However, when our students are home, like over summer vacation, there are only about 14 to 15,000 people in the city of Pullman, as we have about just under 20,000 students on our Pullman campus. Although we do have a lot of students, our student to faculty ratio is 16 to one. So it is very easy to get to know your professors, your fellow students on campus, um, and always, still meet somebody new, which works out pretty well. So in Pullman, students definitely come to WSU because they want to go to a university where they're going to get involved. They're going to go to a university where you're kind of become a part of that student life. And um, so we have over 400 registered student organizations. That's going to include everything from clubs for all of our academic departments, whether those be the business clubs, the robo sub clubs, the raptor club that works with injured birds of prey, but then we also have random clubs like the peanut butter and jelly club to the humans versus zombies club, the student entertainment board. They host free movies and concerts um, on campus. Even while we're in this virtual world, they're still hosting virtual concerts as well as um, online TV watching. They're offering Netflix subscriptions for students so they can watch movies together and um, things of that nature. So they're still finding ways to interact while we are in the virtual world. We have Greek life. We also have a lot of different student resources for our students. So whether that be the Academic Success and Career Center, which can help our students with the academic advising to help them explore our various degrees where we offer on campus. We do have mandatory academic advising for our students. So that's gonna help them make sure they're taking the correct courses and staying on track for graduation. We also have over 200 fields of study and we are a tier one research institution as well as a land grant research institution. So what that means for you as students is we want you to get involved. We want you to get that hands on experience. So you're not only going to classes, but you're building that resume as well. Some of the ways our students get involved, for example, we have a turf grass management program. So our students actually get to work at one of the top three college golf courses in the country, Palouse Ridge, located on campus. Do we have an organic agriculture program, the actual first organic agriculture program in the country. So we do have an organic farm on campus during the growing seasons. We do have fresh produce and farmers markets on campus that are grown by our students. Do we have the Carson College of Business, 
where you have accounting to finance, to marketing, to hospitality business management, to wine business management that actually pairs very well with our viticulture and enology program. We have, so the making of wine. Uh, we also have the Edward R. Murrow College of Communication, so everything from broadcast to journalism, veterinary medicine, health sciences. Our health science campus actually finishes in Spokane, but you do have to have those prerequisites completed prior to applying to those campuses. But if you go to academics.wsu.edu, you can learn about all of our programs, ways to get involved, and more. So highly recommend visiting those. But for the seniors, top three things you're going to want to be doing now is filling out our application. It is available now at apply.wsu.edu. We are not a member of the coalition or the Common App. We are our own separate application. There is a $70 application fee to apply, but we do offer fee waivers at the end of that online application. And you can actually upload an unofficial transcript with your application to help kind of streamline that. We will be test blind for the 2021 applicants. So even if your test scores are submitted, we will not be looking at those. So don't worry about setting those, but we will want that unofficial transcript. If you have a 3.6 or higher cumulative GPA on that unweighted 4.0 scale, you will be assured admission. So that can definitely kind of take some pressure off. That FAFSA or WASFA will be available coming up this Thursday, October 1st. So make sure you get that in early so we can get your financial aid packages back to you sooner and then filling out our WSU general scholarship, which is also available now. And you can learn more at scholarships.wsu.edu. And all of our deadlines are January 31st. So keep that one in mind. Finally, if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out. My contact information is there as well as the QR code to join my Zoom room following this. Or if you ask in the Q&A, I can drop you the link for the Zoom as well. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day and go Cougs. All right, and our final presenter for this morning's session is Eastern Washington University. Sorry, I couldn't get my camera to work. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Mandy and I am the admissions advisor for Eastern Washington University and for Spokane County. And I'm sharing the wrong things on my screen already starting. What is happening? Sorry. Um, <laughs> so we are located in Cheney, Washington and um, we, sorry, I'm totally spacey. Okay, let's start. <laughs> Over. Um, we are located in Cheney, Washington, which is about 20 minutes from downtown Spokane. We also have a campus that is in uh, downtown Spokane that we share with WSU. We actually just opened one of our brand new buildings, which is the most sustainable um, smart building in the north in North America, which is pretty awesome. It will house um, our computer science, our engineering, um, digital uh, design, and a few different other majors, so that's pretty cool. Um, out in Cheney, we are very much a college town. We have um, about a little over 12,000 students, but the population in Cheney is a little in between 7,000 and 10,000, so you're definitely going to feel the college vibes. It's uh, very much a walking town. Um, you can basically walk pretty much anywhere, and the biggest aspect of Cheney is going to be the college. Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, what our tuition looks like. So we're one of the most affordable schools in the state of Washington. We are able to do this by offering scholarships um, through automatic scholarships, which are based on specifically merit based. So we will be looking at your GPA and then also we have a scholarship application. So our scholarship application is um, one application and it puts you into a pool of um, a bunch of different scholarships that you specifically qualify for. So about half of our students end up leaving completely debt free, which kind of takes the stress off of um, the big conversation of leaving school with a bunch of college debt. I know that's a thing that parents talk about. You hear it on TV, you see it on the internet. Um, so it's just something that um, we try to help out with because we don't want that to be an extra stress when you're choosing a college. Um, our community and opportunities um, are pretty vast at Eastern. So we have a little bit over right around 150 different clubs and organizations. We're a division one school for sports. So we have 14 different athletic teams, um, fraternities and sororities, but also we have <clears throat> multicultural clubs, student research, internship opportunities, um, as well as uh, student teaching, study abroad. You also have the chance to perform in um, the music programs, the band, um, theater productions, and art galleries. So there's lots of different choices to how to be involved on campus besides your um, 
uh, just academic major. Along with our community, we are very much a tight-knit community. It's the reason why a lot of people choose um, Eastern as their school of choice um, and the reason why a lot of people stay there. I'm Eastern alum. I also graduated with um, a degree in anthropology, so shout out to Julia for anthropology majors. Um, we, I loved Eastern so much in the community that I built there. I just never left, clearly. Um, so we have a faculty to staff ratio is 22 to 1. About um, most of our class sizes are around 25. So it's hard not to play into the Eagle experience with the vibrant school spirit um, and our red turf. It just kind of fits hand in hand. So we really want you to be able to get involved on campus. Um, so we make those options readily available to you, even virtually right now with the times being the way that they are. For our programs, we have um, about 150 different areas of study. So there's lots of different choices and options for students to choose from. We, some of our most popular majors range from business to computer science, psychology, teaching, um, and engineering. But we also have degrees in um, the medical field. So we have a nursing program that's partnered with WSU that you finish at the downtown Spokane campus. We also have um, health psychology and pre-med, but some of our um, kind of more unique degrees are going to be our business analytics or data analytics, which is um, the business one is partnered with Microsoft. So Microsoft actually helped us design the program. Um, so they're technically training people through their degree at Eastern to work for Microsoft. And then we also have um, a degree in forensic science. So it's one of the best ones in the state. And this one of the reasons for that is the fact that we have the Washington State Archives and Crime Lab right across the street from our campus. So there's a lot of internship opportunities along with um, the faculty and staff that teach those program that program also work in the crime lab. So it's very much a hands on program. We're also the only school in the state of Washington that has a bachelor's degree in science. So there's a lot of opportunities at Eastern for um, degrees. You definitely want to make sure that the program that or the college that you choose has the degree that you're looking for. Um, that's really important. So I want to talk a little bit about our application. Um, since everybody seems to be a little bit different this year, we are also now test optional. So you have a few different opportunities um, to turn things in if you didn't take the SAT ACT. If you did take it, then you still can turn in those scores. But if you did not, you can turn in a letter of recommendation, AP, IB, CLEP scores, running start classes, or um, college in the high school. So we're gonna look at all of those and use those instead of test scores. We also have our own application. So we are not part of uh, the coalition or the common app. Um, our application is pretty straightforward and you can find at ew.edu. Um, I hope you guys have a chance to connect with some schools on their Zoom links. Make sure you check the email you registered with because that is how we sent out all the Zoom links if you didn't get a copy it off of um, their page. So I'm so glad you guys got to join us today and I hope you learn about all the different colleges you're interested in. Thank you. All right. And thank you to all of the presenters. Now just give me one second. It should be there. All right. Great. Um, so we do have about seven minutes for any participants. If you have questions, it looks like we've got one there. So you can pop your question into that Q&A box and uh, our presenters can go ahead and read those questions out loud and answer them uh, live on air, as it were. Okay, I will answer the question that says, can you email that to me? I'm not sure what you're wanting to be emailed to, but if you're looking to talk to the students or to the um, people that you heard from today, we emailed out all the Zoom links with their passwords and everything to the email address that you registered this morning. So keep that in mind um, when you're wanting to chat with people afterwards. And it looks like we have the, what was the contact information for WSU and UW Seattle. Um, I will type the contact information for myself with WSU in that. So that'll be in the chat feature.
Yeah, and I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, type my email in there as well. Um, I'll, I'll take one of these questions really quick, but I had a question about the UW Honors Program. Um, so the Honors Program is a, um, a program at UW students across any majors could choose to apply to that program. Um, it's kind of like a small liberal arts environment within UW, so smaller class sizes, opportunities to interact with professors, but students across all majors will participate in the honors program. So um, just kind of something that students can do alongside their major to help complete those graduation requirements, um, but also kind of um, enjoy kind of a smaller um, community on campus as well as a very interdisciplinary education at UW. So I will answer the next two questions since they're both for Eastern. Um, EWU, how is your finance program? Um, our business program is very good. It has a lot of different options and opportunities, but our business students are one of our highest um, student populations to get internships. So you really get that hands-on experience, um, but business is one of our top majors. And what is the average tuition cost of, for Eastern Washington University? We're sitting right around $7,400 per year, and that is tuition and fees. Oh, and I guess I have a third one. How does the application process work for running start students who want to attend EWU? That is a completely different application than your undergraduate application. So you would want to go to ew.edu um, forward slash running start and they need your transcripts and um, you have to have a specific GPA to be able uh, to be an EWU running start student. And I see a question of, I would like to study architecture and interior design. Can I do both of those at any of the following colleges? Actually at WSU, we offer architecture, interior design, construction management, landscape architecture. Um, so a couple of different options there. A lot of our students do get a minor in one or a double degree in one or two of those. And you can even continue on to get your master's or doctorate. Most of our architecture students will continue on to the master's program so they can be an accredited architect. But if you get the doctorate, then you are a doctor of design, which I think is a pretty legit title. Um, but yeah, it's a great program at WSU. We have a question about Western's admissions deadlines. Our early action deadline, this is non-binding, is November 1st. If you apply by November 1st, you'll hear a response from us by December 31st. So if you want a lot of time to weigh your options before you pick a college, I'd encourage you to apply by that deadline. But our regular uh, priority deadline is January 31st, so plenty of time to get that application submitted. Is there any more information about Running Start and if it will be happening this year and next year? Um, I'm not sure if any of the other schools offer Running Start, but for us, yes, um, nothing has really affected our Running Start program other than most classes will be virtual um, as most things are right now with COVID. For EWU, it says um, at EWU, do you have to live on campus? We do require that you live on campus um, for your first year. That is waived this year with COVID, um, but probably will be reinstated next year. Um, but since if you live in the Spokane area, there is a waiver form you can fill out that is saying that you're going to live at home with your family. Um, and then that would make it so you do not have to live on campus. Although um, for any college you choose, I'm gonna highly recommend you live on campus because it's a really great way to get involved um, and see a lot of opportunities that you may not see if you're just driving to class and then driving back home. Um, hi, everybody. So there was a question um, for both UWs about if they have a medical section. Um, so there is a uh, pre-med track that you can be on towards getting like a um, like an overall like doctorate degree, like later after you go to graduate school. Um, so a lot of our pre-med students do study like biology or chemistry or health studies, depending on what specific like medical field they want to go in. Ben, do you want to add anything else to that? Nope, that's all. I said students across any majors can access those uh, pre-health, pre-med um, resources. So you can major in anything but still access those and prepare for that medical pathway you're interested in.
Great. Nice to see somebody asking about the veterinary program at WSU. We have one of the top vet med programs in the country. We do have a teaching hospital on campus where our students can specialize in large animal, which is going to be a lot of like your livestock, cows, horses, sheep, um, exotic animals, as well as um, small animals, which is generally your companion animals. Super hands on. We also have a ton of animals on campus from birds, cows, horses, sheep, deer, grizzly bears. Um, so outstanding program. I'll send you the link for their page that talks about some of the research they're working on. Great, and we are just about at time for this session. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up. I want to thank all the participants and panelists for joining us today. When you close this window, there will be a link to a quick four-question survey that we'd love you to answer. Um, give us any feedback. Much appreciated. And this is just one of many sessions being offered, uh, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions this week. And in about a week, and this is uh, asked in the Q&A as well, uh, you'll be able to find this session's recording. It is a little bit different for each uh, virtual college fair that we offer. But essentially, it'll be in the same area, in the same website or email, uh, the way that the links and registration were communicated to you and the way you signed up and registered, the email, uh, the recording will be offered to you in the same way. So you should have no problem finding it. Um, it is just a little bit different, so I don't have a, a kind of boilerplate answer for each virtual college fair. Um, I see there's still a lot of questions that we didn't get to, but those questions are going to be passed on to the panelists. So they will reach out to everybody who asked a question that we didn't get to, and you will have your answers. Um, and you also have the opportunity to chat with all of these lovely folks in some breakout sessions coming up for the rest of the day. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and end the meeting, and I'm sure I will see many of you later in the day or even later in the week, and if not, have a great day.